All right, we've got 6.30. We'll go ahead and call the meeting to order. Um, so our first agenda item is public comments. So to be really clear, this is a section for public comments for the school board meeting. The public hearing about SB2 will be almost directly after that. So if you have if you have questions or comments for the school board, now's the time. We've got 15 minutes. Not seeing anybody jump towards the mic, so if it's okay, we'll move on. Very good. All right, we've got a quick bit of agenda review. I would like to add a quick budget summary um, to the agenda, as well as a bus stop approval, if I could, please. All right. Anything else, board members? Okay, then we will move on to agenda number four, which is a public hearing. Um, for petition warrant article to adopt the provisions of New Hampshire RSA 40 colon three. So we'll go ahead and open the public hearing at 632. I'm sorry. 40 colon 13, I'm sorry, did I say the wrong thing? Thank you. Um, so it it is not the school board's uh, in our purview to give any sort of position on this. Um, there are some handouts there that give some very good information about SB2. And I'm going to just read a couple of passages from one of those handouts um, that highlight some of the key differences. And then we'll open the floor um, for questions or comments. So the second bullet on, on the front Keen Sentinel article there, what are some differences between SB2 and traditional meetings? Uh, it says, most significantly, voters in SB2 towns and school districts do not sit down together at an annual meeting to discuss, amend, and vote on warrant articles as voters in traditional meeting communities do. The only chance SB2 voters have to talk about and make changes to articles is during a deliberative session, which is not held in traditional meeting communities. Voters at this session decide the final wording of the warrant articles to send on to the March elections at the polls. I'm gonna skip down to the fifth one. What is the deliberative session in SB2 towns and districts? Also known as the first session, it's the chance for voters to ask questions, debate, or make changes to the articles on the warrant before the voting in March. At the deliberative session, the warrant is finalized by the voters and sent on to the second session, which is March elections. <clears throat> Excuse me. And the last one I'll read is the last one on that front page. What is a default budget in SB2 towns and districts? The default budget is what takes effect if voters reject the budget proposal on the warrant. Generally, the default budget is calculated by taking the previous year's budget including debt service, contracts, and other obligations, and subtracting that, that year's one-time expenses. While there are state guidelines for calculating this budget, some gray areas remain. Voters can discuss and question the default budget, but they cannot make any changes to it at the deliberative session. The school district or town can also decide to hold a special meeting to vote on a revised budget if the proposal on the warrant is rejected, though this is less common. Traditional towns and school districts don't have a default budget because the budget article is discussed and approved during the sit-down meeting. So with that, I'll open the floor. Um, if we can, there's not a ton of people here, so I'm not really worried about it, but if we can keep comments to a reasonable, maybe three minute time frame, um, And when you come up, if you could state your name and um, the street that you live on, that would be great.
Thank you very much. Does anybody else have comments?
I think after years of budgets um, falling to default, it it makes it very difficult to, to have an accurate representation of what's happening in the district because you can't, if you don't get a budget, you don't get to add a line, you don't get to delete lines, everything stays sort of status quo. Um, so if we're trying to, um, you know, if we've never had instructional equipment in the budget before and we add a line for instructional equipment, the budget goes to defaults, so you can't add the line. So it's it's put someplace else. Um, it's it's difficult. Money gets shifted around a lot when we get a default budget. So if we get the default budget, then it's the raises for staff members aren't, that aren't covered by a collective bargaining agreement aren't in the default because that's um, not a contractual obligation for people who aren't under a collective bargaining agreement. So in order to provide an, a salary increase, you need to take money from someplace else. So you're sort of putting in money in places you might not need it, but then having to take it from other areas for places that you did need it because the budget didn't pass. So it, it just gets, it's a little bit confusing and it's not a great representation. Um, and it definitely, if you if you want something that wasn't in the default, you definitely have to find it someplace else, which makes it difficult um, on any given year. The attendance is very disappointing at um, a deliberative session. There's um, very, sometimes um, there's very few people this year in Deerfield. Um, there's a lot going on and the high school contract was really popular, so there was more people. Um, but typically I would say it's been about 30 people in attendance at the deliberative session in Deerfield. That's all I can speak to because those are <laughs> that's the meeting that I attend every year. Any others? I think that's the ballpark. I don't know for sure though. <clears throat> School district meeting. Thank you. Got a couple of people that haven't spoken yet, if anybody would like to.
Thank you. One more call. You guys are okay with it. We've got, we've got time. Sure. No, we got you. Thank you. Anybody else? Last call. Okay, we'll go ahead and close the public hearing at 6.54. Thank you all for coming. Appreciate your input. <clears throat> all right. So agenda article number five is immediate business. Um, so we've got board communication plan, but that one will probably take a minute. So I would like to, if everybody's okay with it, put the two that we added um, before that one. Is that okay with everybody? So when I do bus stop. So you have a bus stop request um, put in by our transportation coordinator, Ms. Bowden, and it's for 281 Pembroke Street. Um, and that is for a new kindergartner entering Hill School, and there is no bus stop in that area. I heard it. Is it? Okay, there we go. Sorry. There's no light. Motion to approve the new bus stop. I'll second it. Any discussion? Pretty straightforward. All right, all in favor of approving the new bus stop as requested, please say aye. 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 Any opposed or abstentions? Fantastic. And we've got a budget update. We do. So Amber ran, um, we put the summary in the drive. She ran your updated um, end of year summary. And at this point, I just wanted to bring it to your attention that the surplus is at 462,543 and your warrant articles are 487. So at this point, um, not only are we looking at not having surplus to uh, spend on the items that we cut from the budget, we're probably not going to fund our warrant articles unless some things change. Um, 
Sure. Um, the surplus is 462,543, and the warrant articles are 487. And to mention a few areas, um, you probably had time to review this. Um, really swings that I thought were worth mentioning. Um, we're fortunate, and the high school wouldn't agree with me, but if we hadn't, <laughs> we haven't been able to fill some positions, um, which has actually given us a surplus to cover other areas. Um, we have um, in the 1200s, we have a surplus right now of 139. And that's um, again because we haven't been able to fill some of the paraprofessional um, positions that are open. Um, we have luckily, we have a contracted services surplus in special ed that's offsetting some of the placement out of district placements. Um, we had I highlighted some areas. Hold on a second. We have an issue with special transportation this year. You've probably heard it mentioned, and other districts are talking about it. Um, that's really hurt. We have one transportation provider that we contract with. They, if they are unable to fulfill um, the additional placements that we have, then we have to go sort of whoever we can find to do it. They're ranging between $400 to $600 per day per student. So our students who need to be um, transported to their schools, we really are tied over a barrel. Um, and then the other issue that we're having is um, we have a, unfortunately displaced students who are dealing with homelessness and we need to share the transportation with the other district. So right now between our special ed transportation and our homelessness, um, issues. One is 181,000 overdrawn and one is 98,000 overdrawn. So we're very fortunate to have overages in other areas that are carrying our budget right now um, to go along with the salaries. Of course, we have a really healthy surplus in the um, fringe benefits and health insurance line. Um, so if it weren't for those other areas where there are a large surplus, uh, we would be in a very different position. So we're going to continue to monitor this, but I just thought it was worth mentioning that there are some um, areas that are really running in a deficit. Questions or comments? Um, with the special ed transportation, is that something that we can utilize trust fund for in any way? Yes, I was actually, thank you, because I was going to mention that that's something, you know, as we get toward the closer to the end of the year, we'll pull that cut list back out, look at the items that were cut, and you can sort of determine, like, you know, hey, if there's, make up a number, $75,000 that were items that were cut that you feel are really important, you could choose to offset that with um, the transportation. So could we? Could we also offset that to get us, uh, say we're at similar numbers as we are today, mm -hmm. where we're going to miss $25,000 worth of warrant articles. We, yep. If we pull 25000 out of that trust to cover transport, then maybe we square. You can pull whatever you want out of your trust, yep. And that one's ours, right? Doesn't, doesn't, we don't need a... Correct. Just a public a, hearing. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Other questions or comments on current budget status? This might be something that comes up at the deliberative session. Can you be prepared to talk about it a little bit? And even you're saying the homelessness, which I know what that means, but I don't think the general public understands that. So even a sentence or two just that explains what our obligation is to that, I think would be helpful for people to explain it because it go it costs are rising on everything we know that mm -hmm. just to understand a little bit more about sure. what the obligation is sure. of the district sure happy to do that thank you others i'm just curious i know it's still a little early and I'm sorry to put you on the spot for the crystal ball. Is it possible, or I guess, how possible would you gauge it that things could swing so that we could fund the warrant articles? I mean, is it, do you, you know, do you think like the surplus is going to end starting with a three, a four, a five? Is it, 
I just don't, I still don't have a good sense of like how much fluctuation there is at this point in the year. Um, there won't be a great deal. I don't anticipate. Um, we're also running over and I, I want to speak to Josh before I say too much about it, but it seems like we're running over in some of our, um, custodial, custodial areas with, um, electric and wood chips and that and I can't figure out why that would be so I want do want to look into that and if that's if we've over budgeted or over projected for that that might release some um, you know things like not spending all of our course and workshop money might release some um, but given the significant overages we have right now I'm trying to be optimistic but um, you know Chichester is really having a budget crisis be because of this very issue um, and then another student moved in and that could happen to us. We still have several months of school. So I'm just trying to be optimistic, but also want you to be aware of what's going on. Mm -hmm. I have a quick question. Sure. Um, do we have a, a sense, like I know it's a problem everywhere and we do have to provide transportation. Do we have a sense that it is gonna get better or it's gonna get worse? Um, are we looking at $1,000 a day coming down the pike per student? Because we may need to be a little proactive and think outside the box for the following year. I mean, maybe we need to get a couple minivans and hire some extra employees and save ourselves some money because that could really end up tanking our budget. So I'm just I mean, curious yeah. if we know if it's going to be getting better. Is it being worked on or it could get much worse than what it is now? I think some of it is still the effects of COVID because there are bus drivers that are still out on any given day and, and you know the poor bus companies are doing routes two and three times a day because they scramble to put kids on different buses and um, it's it's very day to day um, so it's really hard to predict whether or not it's going to get better so far we've been able to manage with those backup companies that we have um, you know good for them for going into to business and seeing a need but it is very costly we're I, I was told this morning that one of our students that were paying the same for their transportation that we're paying for their education. Um, and that's pretty awful. Mm -hmm. So, okay. Last call. Um, I guess, uh, is this on? Is, are there any state resources I know what the answer is probably going to be, but I just thought I put that question out there. I, um, the only re the only um, relief we ever possibly have, and it's always a year in in arrears, is the special ed aid. But there's only a certain pot of money for the whole state, and when everyone is dealing with this issue, everyone's going to be putting in for more money, and there's only so much to go around. So I don't even see that that's necessarily going to help us, unfortunately. Second from Melanie's response, should we get a couple of minivans? Uh, seriously, I, I, you know, the initial startup cost would be significant. Um, but I mean, when she said a couple minivans, would a couple minivans do it? I guess is what I'm, you know, I, 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 I'm not looking to add 10 minivans, but one or two, three maybe. That is not something I know off of the top of my head. I'm cert I can certainly find out how many students we have and where they're going and whether there could be some ride sharing. Um, you know, the, the transportation laws are a little bit um, more strict than they used to right. be. So it has to be a school bus. It has to meet all, it has to be inspected as a school bus, have all the safety features, the, you know, it's, I'm not saying it's not doable, mm -hmm. but it's certainly something to think about if this continues on the way it is. Do Piggybacking on that, is the driver of that vehicle certified bus driver? Because that's that's the biggest wrinkle I see. Because yeah. that's what nobody I hire think it, anyway. it. I think it depends. Stacy looks like she knows, but I think it depends. Oh, I thought you were going to help me. I thought it depended on the size of the vehicle and the number of passengers, but I don't. I can't be sure. Is that what you're thinking, Melanie? I think so. Yeah. I was just thinking the cost of insurance mm -hmm. as well. It'd be interesting to map it out, though. I mean, it would certainly be nice to know that we had a couple of our own vehicles that we knew we could get the students to school every day and not have to worry about that. Point's kind of moot for this year, but I mean, maybe it's something looking forward if it's going to continue this way, which seems to be a trend. The um, 
Inflation Reduction Act supports the purchase of electric vehicles for school districts and municipalities. I was thinking diesel. <laughs> I drive a diesel, so I appreciate that. <laughs> okay. More efficient anyway, so. All right, anything else on the budget before we move on? Okay, um, so the real working item that we have tonight is communication plan. Like this has been kind of on and off and on and off the plate. And I don't think we have a really great um, big picture here. So, and I mean, we can do this however you guys want. I'm just kind of trying to steer a little bit. Um, I was hoping to get some big bullet points. What are our main to do's? And then hopefully a few associated with each one of those. Um, I think the first one is the Facebook page that we've been talking about for the better part of a year. Um, but what I struggle with the other ones because I feel like we do put out, and the SAU and the administration puts out a lot of information in a lot of different places. Um, and so I don't, I think it's hard to define what our goal is for this. So. Can anybody, does anybody have ideas of other large bullet points like the Facebook page you know, that we want to get down as sort of goals? Um, I question whether it would be helpful to consult with a consultant. I wouldn't be opposed. If anybody else has, I mean, obviously based on price and all of that stuff, I mean, but I can certainly say more. I just didn't yeah. know if we were sort of like throwing everything on the wall for yeah, now, no, or that's, that's good. I mean, like I said, I have no idea what that looks like, but I don't know what a communication plan looks like effectively in this situation. I right, and so that. that's exactly what I'm getting at. I I filed this in the category of like I feel like we are suffering a lot in this category from we don't know what we don't know. But um, when we hear from members of the public that it's a problem that we have such a minority of the town attending our meetings where we vote to make important decisions, that's just one example that I would pinpoint from things I heard tonight that to me I feel is a symptom of communications that could be better. You know, and so how do we make it better? I would respectfully suggest that as a group collectively, maybe we don't know. And so we might benefit from some professional how-to on that. Not in some like extravagant, you know, tens of thousands or even maybe multiple thousands of dollars ways, um, but some kind of down and dirty, nitty gritty, like top 10 kind of ways. Probably. Yeah, I mean, I think there's a couple different approaches. There could be like a train the trainer, you know, so that we would line ourselves and or SAU staff up to be not necessarily doing more, but maybe doing different. So that would be one thing. Um, there could be like a pay someone to do PR for us on an ongoing basis. Um, those two approaches are not mutually exclusive. You know, we could decide like the annual meeting is something we always invest $500 of commercial PR in, um, you know, just so on and so forth, just to sort of spitball with someone who knows what, how to do this sort of thing. Although I think it's a good idea, there have been members of the school board who have been PR people that have worked on that in the past and there still has been people don't show up to the meetings there still has been mailings and people still don't come so I'm not saying we don't do it but just where is it our communication and where is it Oh, for sure. Lack of interest. Yeah. We're not in going to get 5,300 people at the meeting, and that should never be our goal. Yeah. 
The other thing that I had, I think we talked about it before, um, but just on the SAU 53 website, the Pembroke board, I would love it if we could just have like a little update bullet thing, especially when we go forward, like we just had our Hill School meeting tonight before this one. As we go forward, just like a little update section on there where somebody, whoever manages the website could be like community engagement event about Hill School this time, this date. Like that report's almost finished. That's going to be public soon. Like it's just a place for us to have a quick little update. I think the issue with that page is there is nobody really managing that page. Oh. And the, the, you know, we, we, the SAU office posts things, right. but if it's the difficulty is keeping it active. And that's sort of been my mantra to everyone. Don't put a button on your website and then someone clicks on it and it's from 2013. Like yep. if you're, if you're not going to do it, then don't even have the button to click. Mm -hmm. um, so I love that idea. I just need to brainstorm with my office and think about who feeds the information. Because when you talk about hiring someone with PR work, I don't think it's as common now because there's so many modalities that we use to communicate. We don't need someone to write a press release or to, you know, do a mailer. Um, but we do need ways to who's who's the brains behind the operation, like who's coming up with the content, who's thinking like, oh, there's this thing going on at Hill, we should, we need to get that out. It's just raising that awareness to keep it current. That's sort of my yeah. primary concern. So I we guess keep it current. I would, I would challenge that though, that I think that a good modern PR firm might offer a very competitively priced software solution, you know? So like, instead of using your super valuable staff mm -hmm. to spend the time, it might be, you know, a $35 a month subscription that vacuums up content that already exists elsewhere and pushes it out, you know, digitally. I don't know. I, I am my, fantasizing. Yeah. No, I, but I like it. You're right. But, <laughs> I just I don't I don't know. And I, I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm saying I literally don't know what yeah. the cost of something like that would be. But I software is my where my head went to, and I think from my perspective as an IT person, part of the problem, I guess, that I have with the school website and things like that is that it's sort of, well, half the stuff's in SharePoint, which I just flat out dislike. So that's a personal bias. Um, you can, I don't care. I'm not, that's, no, anybody that knows me. No, anyway, um, so, and I, I just think it's sort of, um, varied like it doesn't seem like a unified platform and i'm not suggesting we you know revamp the whole website or anything like that um, but if there's something that can manage all those different things for us with the click of a couple buttons um the other idea that i had just as a you know throwing stuff off the wall type of thing for a very very basic uh not you know this doesn't involve graphics it doesn't involve, for purely information for events only i think an easy thing that we could do since we use google products anyway um, is if each school and the SAU had one singular events Google Calendar that's shareable, and on the website you can click add that. So they, if if you got a kid in every school, you can go and click on it on every web page, and it merges it with your thing. It's constantly updated, and one singular person at each one of those schools would be in charge of putting whatever. I mean, the Spirit Day things or. The link to, uh, you know, when the dance is or basketball games or, you know, or maybe it's more than one person. Maybe Mr. Vizina does the sports events. But anyway, I think that's one thing that you could do easily, fairly easily. Um, it, it is adding a responsibility for somebody, but I don't think putting things on a calendar, you know, once a week is probably too onerous. Um, and it lets it merge into everybody's phone that they're already looking at and they know when stuff is. Um, the other idea that I had and I'm arguing with myself in my head if I want to volunteer to do the draft or not. So if somebody else does, please speak up. Um, would it be worth doing a, a survey on one call now and asking the community, what are your issues with our community, with our with our communication? Like, what are you looking for that's hard to find? What are you looking for that's easy to find? What are the top five things that you go to the school web pages for? Like, if we came up with a 10 to 15 question survey, maybe it would give us some direction at least of what, what we're really trying to fix here. Uh, I think the Facebook page is easy because everybody's on mm -hmm. social media and that, I don't mean easy to accomplish, I mean it's an easy, clear goal. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm not sure that we really know what else we're trying to fix at this point. And I, I wonder if a, I, 
And I don't have any grand illusion that 5,300 people are going to respond to the right. survey either. But, right. you know, at least we can say that we went out and we tried and we solicited feedback. And we tried to fix the things that we heard about. If that makes sense. I think you have to probably go beyond one call now because that just would go to. That's parents. true. It should be community wide. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and that would probably be, I mean, how many Facebook pages are there right now? I mean, it's, it could be added to each, you know, Survey Monkey or whatever, to each one of those uh, Facebook pages. And although people, there's crossover population on each one of them too, so you would have a skewed number anyway, because I'm sure people would multiply. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. If you can, I, I don't know. Sort of. All right. Is it, I don't know if this is like crossing streams here. I'm just trying to figure out like how to hit everybody. Um, and as I'm saying this out loud, this would only be Pembroke, but I was just wondering if you could like stick it with the tax bill. Mm. I don't think we do. We'd have to ask. Yeah, you can't. Yeah, you can't. Yeah, you can't do that. Um, yeah. We're just trying to figure out like how to get to everybody. Well, Town report, or not the town report, the town newsletter comes out. Just came out. Just came out, right. Now, but in the future, what's it come out? Yeah. Quarterly? But we don't want to miss our PA. That's not the annual report. You're talking about the regular quarterly newsletter. Yeah, the little report. newsletter that yeah. just came out. Yeah. yeah. So that, that would be, unless you spent the money on a mailer. So adding it, something to that would be the way to go. Maybe we can take this as a homework assignment. I, too, agree that a survey is a really good idea. Um, I would be happy to volunteer to take a first stab at drafting questions. Thank you. I mean, we can all sort of brainstorm on how we would get it out there, too. Um, and, you know, I can, I can uh, email David at the town and see if he has any bright ideas from that side. Um, and I mean, we've done stuff like this before too. It's always the hardest thing is to reach everybody. Yep. Um, I mean, we could even encourage people. Maybe I'm I'm saying things before I think about them now. But you know, you, for even on one call now, you could say, "Feel free to share this link with your friends and neighbors," type mm -hmm. of thing too. Um. Can I just make a request that if anyone has any particular things they want included as a question, just shoot me an email and I'll make sure to incorporate that. And obviously the resultant draft that I produce will be a first draft subject to review and comment, but at least as a first blush, your um, input will be included. I did want to say, Andy, that I think your calendar idea would be great. Um, because you can just have a little, little tiny link, like if you're looking for the dance or what spirit day. You looked at Three Rivers on Monday. Did you see all the people running in the shirt? Because not everybody knew it was spirit week. Right. And they're like, here's your tie-dye shirt. Because <clears throat> the information came out a little bit like after the start of school. People weren't prepared. People were going on Facebook and checking the community pages. And then they were looking at the newsletter. Right. So and that's what I was, is, you can't, be you can't awesome. put everything on a calendar. But if you it's can't. an event... Right. And it was then at least that's that's exactly what I was thinking. You could just everybody's click on it. Facebook all the time going, Hey, does anybody did your kid bring this thing home? Did, yep. Does anybody know right. what day this is? And they all want their points because they're all trying to win the pizza party, so it's very competitive. I mean, I think it'd even be just nice to like a sports one. It, it would they be get nice to yeah. You know, they right. if I went and looked harder, I could find them. It's not a it's not that we're not telling people. Um but it's in just my in daily, multiple right, places. I don't have any kids yeah. in PA playing those sports right now, so it's not top of mind. But if I was looking at my calendar on my phone and it was like, oh, look, a Thursday night, I don't have anything going on and there's a home game, I would be much more apt to go. Okay. I still am a big fan of um, reporting out sooner than our draft minutes are available, um, actions taken. So it would just be like the motions and the votes on the motions. I know that a lot of like, you know, for example, I don't mean to demean bus stops, but I don't think we have a lot of members of the public that are particularly dying to know that we approved a new bus stop tonight. <laughs> so like, maybe it's not critical we get that information out. 
but sometimes, like for example, at our last meeting, the school calendar, that's pretty critical information. And I think it's, it's, a, it's a new way of doing things and I appreciate that, but I think we can find a way within a couple business days to just get out, you know, here was the motion, it passed. Here was the motion, it passed. And then I think we'll be doing a much greater service to the public to keep them informed in a brief way. So they don't have to, you know, it's like a, it's a it's the Cliff Snotes version of the minutes, if you would. We think that people are looking at the minutes anyway. I think we can find out too. I mean, I don't know if we can find out historically, but if we're setting up something new, we can definitely get views counted. Um, yeah. So if we did something like this and we did it for six months or a year and it was you know getting looked at twice a week, then we could change our mind. Um, I also had a question. I um, I loved it when so many people could comment during the pandemic online. Um, no, I really did, even though, you know, the comments were, there was a lot of tension about the topics we were talking about during the pandemic. And so I didn't love that part, but it was amazing to have board meetings with, you know, double digit members numbers of, of the public participating, sometimes even over 100 members of the public participating. And um, I think the two primary reasons were because the their topics were such hot topics, but also because people could participate remotely. Um, I understand that the status of the law does not allow us as board members to have meetings remotely. You know, we have to have a quorum of us physically present in one place. But I think the law allows us to have members of the public participate in public comment remotely. And I'm not sure why or how we decided to stop doing that. And I think in terms of communications, that might be something we might wanna revisit. So I would say a couple of comments. One, um, there are some technical so we were, at, we were in the WebEx individually too. So it made it easy to communicate through the WebEx. I don't know how that would work right now. That's not unsolvable, um, but I think I would lean on Josh Barubi or whoever to come up with a solution to that. And I, I don't know what a turnaround time on that would be. I will say, and I, I don't say this to say it's not a good idea or that, we, or that I'm against it, um, simply as a comment. From my, my perspective of managing the meeting, um, it was more difficult and i think that it would i don't know who it would be i'm not telling i'm not going to say that sandy should do any more than she already does mm -hmm. but some i mean even just like webex is not great about keeping everybody in the order that they used to be in and figuring out who raised their hand first especially when there were so many people and we're still going to have a time limit on the comments then say oh well i raised my hand 15 minutes before susie did and then i didn't get the comment and so I certainly, overall, as an idea, I'm not against it, but I think that there's some kinks that need to be worked out first. Yeah, um, I mean, I would love to get to the point where that's not as clunky as it is, even in the current situation, you know, just having to start and stop. And I, I don't know. There, there's, I'm sure there's a way that one of us, whether it's me or whoever, can be running it from the laptop in front of them and sort that out. And there's probably somebody out there doing it we could find somebody that's already doing it that way and pick their brain, that would be good. I think yeah, going back to our WebEx board meetings, the, the comments were all one topic. I mean, you, you saw when we got to the budget and we had rescinded the mass policy, everybody was gone. Mm -hmm. Nobody talked about the budget. And this year, here we are again. And I think if it, it, I, I, I Carrie's know, here. Well, sorry, I apologize for that one. You're always here, so you're just part of the. Um, so, <laughs> so uh, you know, 
I understand that people have outside commitments or can't physically travel here to be in the meeting, but obviously if you're, you have time to be online, you could be here. There are people's limitations that may prohibit them from being here. They don't have to stay for the whole time. They can say their piece and leave if they want to. Just like they can at, at school district meeting in, in, uh, in March. Um, if it's that important and you're committed to it, then I think you have to. The, the online, I, I, I'll be honest with you, it wasn't the subject matter. It was the repetition of it all. It was the length of it all because you can't control. You can have a, a very concise conversation with someone or you know, comment when you're in person, whereas online, it, it, I don't think it allows for that. And there's communication issues uh, electronically that come up too that were that I was definitely not a fan of. Was was I liking to see a lot of people involved? Was I hoping that it would continue? Sure, but it didn't. Yeah. You know. So I mean, how many people are on right now? Right. So I guess what I would say in response is, um, I would want us to sort of finish this communications plan development and build out, um, then open up public comment and public participation to online, try it for like six to 12 months, see if we can develop more public participation in our meetings by having it open to online. And if not, not, you know, like give it, give it a try. And if it's just not going to happen, then then we know we will have tried in sort of this quasi post pandemic era, because I totally hear everything you're saying. But if we can get, I don't know how many is going to make it worthwhile, a half a dozen, 20 people participating, like, because as a as a working mom of school age kids, like, if I wasn't on the board, I mean, I don't know how Carrie does it. If I wasn't on the board, I would never be here even though this stuff is really important. Like, and there is a chilling effect by requiring people to be here in person. Um, so that's what I would say in response. Like, let's give it a try later. Yeah, and don't, don't get me wrong. I, I am not a fan, but mm -hmm. I wouldn't oppose it. Great. So I would, so I'm like half on board mm -hmm. with, with the try it first. And mm -hmm. my hesitation is I don't know what the work effort is to set it up. Yeah. And this, Sounds like a bad idea before they even say it, but I'm going to throw it out there anyway. I wonder, once we've got a Facebook page and we feel like we have reliable communication, would it be too antagonistic to, to broadcast on our new communication platforms and say, we're considering doing this. We, want, we don't want to put in the effort, assuming there's a decent effort involved, if it's not going to be used. So... At the start of the 23-24 four year or 24 school year, we're going to monitor the online participation carefully for the first, you know, five meetings, right? And encourage people to be there. And then if there, if we do that and there's still zero to two people, um, then maybe we don't do it. Yeah. Well, and also short of that for now, why don't I try to design some survey questions to get at it? That's yeah, what I was thinking too. Yeah, maybe that's, you could ask a question on the survey yeah, that goes yeah. out on communication. And maybe we do try it. Like, I don't think it's totally a bad idea, but I think if you've ever listened to our videos and gone back in the record, it's really hard to hear. So I worry about like being able to hear the person. And if we do try it, maybe we could try just the first public comment session and we advertise it that way. We will have public comment on the first online instead of both do you know what yeah, i mean I like yeah it's just really hard yeah. i know we've tried really hard with our technology but when you listen to the recordings it's really yeah, hard i think that's a nice compromise and, yeah. and i do think there there is a way to make it so like the computer audio comes through the big speaker too like there is i just don't know how hard that is to figure out av is not even close to my thing so say if we can get it to do the captioning that could oh, yeah. help as well. I'm Good not point. I'm not familiar with WebEx and the captioning, but I know Zoom mm -hmm. does a really good job with captioning. I think I, we don't use a lot of Microsoft stuff, so I don't want to 
say anything that I don't know what I'm talking about, but I would guess we've got a better chance of switching to Google Meet, but their capturing is really good too. Um, I think it, yeah, I think yeah. WebEx added it. Oh, yeah. So, we, I mean, we should try that next meeting just to see if it works and if it picks up our voice any better than the audio does. Um, one of the other options, I mean, you saw when we were remote that people were actually sitting there with their phones on Facebook Live because maybe some people couldn't figure out the access to our meeting, whatever the case may be. I mean, that's one thing, too, when we're in a meeting. We could, if we have a Facebook page... We could be Facebook Live at the same time. Um, you know, that gets out to more people too. We may not pay attention to this, but maybe you know, scrolling through one night after dinner and they're like, oh, look, Facebook Live, Pembroke School Board. Yeah, I would, you know, I'd have to see I, I, I don't know about legal it, stuff. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't know. know about yeah. it, but I just, yeah. you know, I've, I've seen it. Yeah, I mean, we're, yeah, my hesitation is just that we're, we're Google customers, so there's some you know level of contract and privacy involved there. Where if if our just if our school board account on Facebook does something, I have no idea what privacy restrictions and things like that it makes me nervous. Um, but I, I mean, I think bottom line is there's a way to do it, um, and I certainly think it's it's worthwhile to do if we can come up with some idea that people are actually going to utilize it. Um, and it might still be worthwhile if it's only two people, if the work effort's not that big. I just don't know, and that's something that we could discuss with, with Josh or whoever we need to, to see, you know, can somebody take the time over the summer break to figure out a better way to do this or, or whatever. And then I just wanted to add, um, this is my last thing, is that if we were to um, re-zoom or reinvigorate online participation, I think it would be lovely to sort of decrease the um, administration's in-person attendance requirements and give them the out to attend online at some frequency. I don't want to say always, but sometimes, whatever, I guess, Patty and or us decides would be nice. They're, I mean, I don't envy their workload. Being able to do it from office or home sometimes would be real nice. I think they've appreciated that we've cut them out of the second meeting every month. Um, that's made a big difference. Cool. So, I mean, so so I can start some conversations, start sending some emails around, um, you know, who do I need to meet with about a Facebook page and what would be involved in that, and bring back some more concrete stuff next time. And Amy's going to take a crack at some survey questions um if somebody wants to look at their notes and sort of consolidate what we talked about or wait until sandy's done <laughs> and sort of formalize like all of the different little bullet points that i have scrambled all over the place here and send them out to the whole board as an informational email that might give us a little bit of um direction but i, I think that the results of that survey are going to inform a lot of what we do going forward um, I don't want to I don't want to bail on this but I think we've we've had a lot of good conversation tonight but is there any any other comments that we want to hit uh, as sort of a, a jumping off point here I had Josh do an email for the Deerfield School Board and he did the email to use it to verify their account they set up their Facebook page and they are live so he could, it was, I'll make it up, you know, Joe Jones at SAU 53, so that you could set up your Facebook page under an email. You got the verification email, and then he deactivated the email account because it's not going to be used for anything other than to get your Facebook page. Because right. um, it's not going to be monitored. And, and then they, the board, they're, you know, very slowly rolling out. They agreed, you know, we'll, we'll post um, minutes, we'll post the agenda. So it's just pushing information, and it's um, no comments. So it's just in a, like you've said in the past, all of you have said, if you, you, you're you on Facebook all the time, you see the board, that might be just be another place for you to click and, and get to information. So they're testing it. They just started. So if you want to start, I can have Josh yeah. set yeah, that up. Yeah, might as well get, 
get the ball rolling anyway. Um, who is is the chair in charge of posting, or is it no? So in there's the they have um, actually on board roles and responsibilities. They have um, communications. Somebody's in charge of it, so they're now sharing it. One board member is doing Facebook, and one board member has traditionally been the communications person who does, like Amy said, and post something after like a little quick summary of this is what the board did. Um, and I think he used to post it within a couple of days of the meeting. Um, and you know, that torch gets passed around and there's someone else doing it now, but it's just a, bo a board member. So we, I asked to have two people have the password to the Facebook page yeah, just so good. that two people there's that a backup. Are on the same election cycle. Yeah. <laughs> That's um, what I've done too. When I've done Facebook pages, you can have like somebody who manages it, co-manages and like an edit. And then that way it's not just one person mm -hmm. feeling like they're responsible for posting everything. So being that we're mere weeks away from an election, um, could I be so bold as to say, you know, one of the first things that we always do is roles and responsibilities yeah. in a new board. Do we want to add a communication person on there? And It, it sounds like we might add two. Right. Possibly. Right? I mean, we yeah. call it a communication committee, just like we have the policy review committee. And that could be two. Works for me. Cool. Okay. Is there anything else on communication plan? Is that a yes? I, I, no, I just, I mean, I'm not into this so much, so. Uh, you know, <laughs> wish I could be more helpful. Yeah, I, I mean, I was just thinking the Facebook page, you know, with the minutes and stuff like that, but also, um, you know, and I don't know if this is redundant or not, but because it's on Facebook and you're not searching out the SAU website or the school website, um, you know, posting links, directing people to these things on a regular basis so they you know it's always kind of like rotating in and out so they you know yeah i was seeing the same find, thing find something out you know like way. a standard signature almost for your post that always has them in there or yeah. in the about section or something like for each school for the sau for the board yep um I'm, yeah i'm there too cool okay we're good that's be two question my sb2 question is thinking about access. I know that transportation can be provided to the polls. I'm just thinking, is that something long-term thinking about providing transportation? I think it would be a very small percentage of people to provide transportation to the deliberative session. It's a thought, I'm not. Can, can I add to that childcare? That's we, happened in the we past. We usually have childcare. I don't yeah, know. Did yeah. it happen I, last year? I thought so. I just wanted to make March sure. Meeting. March meeting. March meeting. Yeah. yeah, yeah I think we have the EAP, I think, has provided childcare. It's usually run through. Mm -hmm. Oh, it was. Oh. What was it? Who was it? I'm the National Honor Society. Yeah, that's right. right. That's Somebody what I was going to say. I think yeah. they used to do a deliberative session too, but there's only like five people that show up, so they stopped doing it. Yes, public hearing. Yes, public hearing. Public Sorry. Session. Yes. <laughs> March. Well, that's the annual meeting. The yeah, deliberative, deliberative session is technically an SB2. Uh, yeah. We don't have, people call it that though. Right. People use interchangeable the terms that aren't meeting. technically. School district meeting. You can get some of the same stuff. Yeah. So just to clarify, are you talking about the meeting on March 11th? Okay. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> yeah. Well, but we didn't buy the minivans yet. So. Um, why can't we talk about providing transportation to the meeting on March 11th? I mean, it's three weeks away. I don't logistics. Who's going to do it? <laughs> I don't even know. I have no idea. Are we? I don't have anything. I know, I know you. Know anything about it. You know, it, when they're providing transportation to the polls. It's usually just volunteers. It's yeah. not, I mean, so neighbors legality. Neighbors. Yeah. yeah, that's what it boils down to. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I don't think that is a huge worry until it is. You know, one of those things. When you, that's something that's unanticipated um, generally. So, but I mean, 
Just don't. I, could, <laughs> I was just going to say, don't call one of those student transport companies if you need a ride, unless yeah, you have no. plenty of money. I'll walk. You know, I'll, I'll be at the meeting, but I mean, we could, it's like, you know, you can go to one of the Facebook pages and say, hey, you know, is there anyone who is willing to provide transportation? If so, put your name here and everyone who needs transportation to Saturday, March 11th meeting, contact these people. You know, we could, you know, I mean, I could do that. Any Anybody can do that. So, you know, I'd be willing to do that on any of the pages, so. Yeah. And then mm -hmm. you leave on commenting and, uh, no, I'm not gonna, I'm not, never <laughs> Good question. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I think. All right, never mind. I'm thinking about trying how to do that right now. So, <laughs> yeah. Never mind. Not important. Well, I mean, I guess I beg to differ. I think it's really important. No, no, no. I, I mean, not important <laughs> as as to how. Just yeah. You know, just to get it done. You know. The, yeah. What my I was thinking. Right. As as to how to do it. Yeah. I mean, one of the things that I'm thinking about is that there are all sorts of, um, you know, get out the vote type organizations that provide transportation, but none of the ones that I can think of are bipartisan in nature. You know, they're more partisan in nature. And so that's not appropriate for us to be coordinating on, you know. Um, so if there was a nonpartisan, that would be best. Organiz, you know, nonprofit organization that we could partner with, I think that would be our first priority target. Um, short of that, you know, when I hear some of you saying they provide transportation for going to the polls, who is they? I think just individuals. I mean, okay. Your names out there if you need a ride to the polls. And, you know, they're like on one year on the snowstorm day, mm -hmm. there was, you know, I, th I think five, 10 people put their names out there and they like ran mm -hmm. all day long. Mm -hmm. So. Are there any, are there any um, inside of Pembroke groups that would be considered nonpartisan? You know, I'm thinking like, I'm not even going to get the name correct, but like the Pembroke Women's Club, you know, or the, um, the, you know, the Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts, like the Eagle Level Scouts who are, you know, have their driver's licenses, um, or the, um, what's the, um, what's the, uh, it's like the key club for grown-ups. No, J, um, it's like a Good Samaritan club. I can't think of the name right now. Or any of the local churches. I mean, would that be considered to be nonpartisan? Are you talking about like us as a board or Pembroke as a school? Like us as a out? board reaching out and saying, hey, we're hearing from our community that there is um, a lack of access with transportation. Could you put out a call for volunteers to, and could you be in charge of the organizing of volunteers to do the pick up and drop off of people and advertise that availability? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know either. I think neighbors do that already. They did last year and the year yeah. before. I don't know if we legally, like Pembroke School Board is saying, hey, you know what I mean? It needs to be like an individual, like, hey, I'm from South Browning Court if you need a ride. 
I can fit seven. Text me. <laughs> it just seems like we're saying like, oh, there's a problem and it's too legalistic and so we can't do anything. I don't, for me, it's not that. It's that I don't, I don't, I don't, I feel like it's not. So at least for the school district meeting, it's our meeting. And I feel like, I, I mean, to your point of nonpartisan, I feel like that's, it's just a hairy, I feel like somebody's going to show up at a school board meeting three weeks later and say, well, you well, you picked up all the people that you knew were going to vote for you. And I tried to get a ride and you didn't call me back. And I just I just don't like I, I don't know. I can't I'd want to hear what Dean had to say about it. And yeah. it just I can like I think there are plenty of organizations in town that could do this if they want. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure that I'm comfortable like. Trying to organize that on behalf of the board. Mm -hmm. That's probably from a place of ignorance for me because I just don't I just don't know about this stuff, but I just yeah. hate to put us in a bad situation. Yep. This year. But seriously looking at it for next year. Yeah. Well, and I can see with that concern that there might not be enough time for this year, but let's do something for next year and why delay in doing something so it sounds like we want to put a question to dean about like what are best practices if we want to uh Organize. what's the word facilitates you know because we don't really want to organize right like right. i don't right. want to be collecting the sign up of names and figuring out who has what passenger capacity, right? We want to have someone else do <laughs> that, um, but like catalyze, facilitate, whatever. We could pose the um, same question to, to um, Barrett. Barrett. Yeah. yeah. Or, I mean, unless we want to fund like the school buses to, I mean, that would be the other I mean, alternative. Honestly, if we had our own school buses, I would be interested in looking into that. Yeah. I have no interest in paying anybody else to do it. I wonder if there's a way to add that to your survey. Would it be helpful if you had transportation to the district meeting? Is transportation an issue? You know what I mean? We're going to do a survey. It doesn't have to be all on communication. You, know, it you was could ask. It as an issue during yeah. the public hearing. Um, but I, yeah, I would generally think you would almost, I'm thinking that you would need specialized transportation for those because i mean most everybody that yeah you, yeah that's and you'd get you know you'd need a wheelchair van or something like that or you know a lift however however they work um mm -hmm. so i i think the best right now we could do is you know I, i'd be happy to put out something on the facebook pages this is hey if you're available and you would like to put your name out here people may need transportation to you know the saturday both saturday meetings and to the ballot on tuesday you know and they could put your name out here and that's it and you know then you could respond to that and tell them your needs and whatever the case may be and see who can help yeah i think that's a good immediate term plan and then i do other folks think it's a good idea to check in with maybe Barrett would would be the better first stop, Andy? Yeah, well, like Patty said, it he's free. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's worth. I think it's worth asking the question. Um, shifting gears briefly, if we need to come back to this, only because my brain is really slippery. Did Tom happen to mention? Did the, did the moderator happen to mention last week there was an email that was sent um, that indicated that school board members should be at the Tuesday, can I miss that? Can oh, you sure. summarize maybe? There's a, a little known statute um, that school board members are supposed to be present for the entire election or name someone pro tem to be there in their place to do perform their duties. Nobody's sure what the duties are because the town runs our elections. Um, so it could be pretty uh, open the door, get some, I don't, I don't know what your duties are. But I'll be opening the door because I'm on the ballot, but yep. you guys can be, you know, doing stuff like counting ballots. Yeah. 
so F he just wanted to make you aware of that um, statute and what you do with that is your call. And just to elaborate a little bit on that, I I think if I heard him correctly, two other points were like the designating someone pro tem was discouraged. Maybe did he say that? I, or I didn't get that feeling. Okay. Um, All right. But... And and then I think he he said like at a at a minimum we would need a quorum, right? It wasn't necessarily like all five every single hour, like from the opening of the polls to the closing of the polls. It has never happened in the past. Just... That's what I thought. Okay. Sorry, I didn't mean to hijack. I just, something Gene said, brought that up in my head. I think so. Mm -hmm. or I'm aware. I'll be there for that. I also do that. Yeah. Well, I think Tom. Um. Tom was really clear, at least in his interpretation, that the statute requires a quorum of the board to be present for the duration of the election. So even if Jim says, like, well, I don't really have any specific duties, um, I think our plan ought to be that we have a quorum of the board there. Because I think the underlying point is that the if the integrity of the election were to be scrutinized, we would want that scrutiny to reveal that the level of the integrity is high. Yeah, and, and I think that was the main point. If something did happen, that the duties were fulfilled the way they're supposed to be. That was the main point. And basically, then he said, well, but do what you want. Um, so. Was there anything else on what were we even talking about? On the transportation thing, I, I kind of hijacked that. My bad. Okay. Uh, I'm not really prepared to talk about what my schedule is that day right now. We have another meeting before that, right? Wait, no. We don't? Yeah. Mm. Huh. No, it's first and third, and the first just got skipped. So there's there's only one on the. And I think you know the the school district meeting may be displacing that first one too. Yeah. So so we actually are having the two, but. Um, yeah, we'll have plenty of work. Yeah. Well, maybe those of us that can provide some information about that day can do so, and we can just do the best we can. I, I plan on being there, you know. I'll probably, you know, spend the half day there. I'll miss maybe the first two hours of it of it um i'm usually there for a few hours and like midday and then come back too but i have something in the morning but i'll be there for a majority of the day yeah it will uh it starts at 11 runs yeah. till seven yeah probably realistically can't be there until five yeah but i can stay after seven for counting and things like that and Well, it starts at 11. Well, I guess. Yeah. It is 11, yeah. Not the normal 7 to 7. And generally prior to that, most of the stuff that's going on, I mean, is, you know, setting up the tables and 
which well, I've been everything. there for that many, many times, and they've never even asked me to help. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are people. They have a science that. to that. Yeah. Because yeah. I'm usually there by two or three and stay till the counts are done. So that would be at least one person. I can probably be over there by five unless something comes up. Yeah, it'd be like one ish. So, 14. 14. Sorry. I mean, Amy's going to be there pretty much most of the day, probably from the beginning anyway, mm -hmm. at least. And then. You know, we can fill in after that. We just figure out how to, I mean, do you let it slide for the first two hours? <laughs> yeah, I have the whole. That would be two. Um, cause then I'd go in probably, you know, 1230, one o'clock, something like that. But. So, at best, yeah. right. I'm yeah. there all day. So. One. So. Uh, We just, yeah. I mean, I can check. I can check schedules and see what I can do too. I just can't no, can, commit to anything more than that. I could get somebody. I could try to get someone to pro tem it. Um, what did you say was your availability? Probably twelve thirty one o'clock. So, um, yeah, I can. I, I I can reach out to someone to fill in that first too. So you'd have you, you, whoever. Any stipulations on versus age or anything? Evelyn will do it. I think she's got to be a voting age. Um. So. Yeah, I, I can I can get someone for the first couple. Okay. Sorry, I brought it up. <laughs> well, it's fine. No, it's better to work it out now. Yeah. yeah. Um. Okay. And. Yeah. Yeah. So we've jumped around a little bit. Um, so the main ones were the communication plan, bus stops, cut and dry, budget stuff. Um, anything else about anything that we talked about before we move on to number six? Okay, agenda item number six is another round of public comments. Yeah. Right. I guess, yeah, so for liability reasons, the school board is not asking that, but we certainly <laughs> would not stop you from doing that. <laughs> right. Yeah, thank you. Okay, do we have non public? So, um, so our next meeting is March 21st at 630. Um, the School district meeting. Let me get on my thing before I say dumb stuff. <laughs> School district meeting is Saturday, March 11th in the auditorium, correct? Voting is on Tuesday the 14th in the gymnasium. And the town meeting is on the 18th, also in the auditorium. And if there's nothing else, I'll accept the motion to adjourn. So moved. Oh yeah, March eighth. March eighth, and that's earlier. Is that five thirty, Penny? Six. Oh, five. Normally it's five thirty. Okay, five thirty, March eighth, full SAU board meeting. Uh, calf, right? Yeah. Yeah, PA cafeteria.
Good question. You're arriving early. Yeah, there, I mean, unless you personally know you have a particular need, there's not really any need to be there early. Um, maybe, you know, five minutes early so you can grab your seat and after you talk to all the people that you see and say hi. Um, I'll, I'm usually there an hour early to mess with the projector and stuff like that. Um, but otherwise, you know, if you don't have a need, you really can show up when it starts. Show up a few minutes early because usually right before it starts is when the line gets to get your voting card because everybody shows up five minutes before. And just to be clear, um, we told Tom that um, Melanie's going to speak a little bit and yeah, and you're going to do everything else. And just for my own selfish benefit, I am not preparing any remarks for anything, right? Yep. Um, yeah. Right. Right. Yep, and I can email that, but I, I also, we went through it at an NBC meeting, and I was very clear about all that, too. So I, Tom should have that information, but maybe I'll shoot him an email just so he understands that on one article number two, I'll have a little bit more to say, and the rest of them should be pretty short. Um, we can coordinate sometime in the next couple of weeks. Yeah. I, it's really not a big deal. No. I mean, whatever you want to do I'll just fine. email you, and you can tell me if it sounds fine. Yep. Um, quick question on the full SAU 8 meeting. I did respond. Did you guys, do we have a quorum? Do we know yet if we have a quorum? Because I don't know if I've heard I'm sure. having a really hard time getting that. Okay. Yeah, okay, I'm um, going. I'm not going. I'm having a hard time getting the night off and I'm still trying, but I was able to get a half a night if I needed to, but they really didn't want me to, so. Okay. Yeah, and I, I'm, I'm going to, so I think we should be all set. Um. I will also send you all, since I didn't realize we didn't have a meeting um, on the 7th, I will, probably last minute because that's kind of my style, send you all my slides that I put together for our meeting um, so that you can first sanity check them. And also, if there's any points that you wanted me to hit that I missed, let me know and I'll, I'll get them in there somewhere. So by March 7th? Ish, yeah. Okay. Well, Give or take. Like to be 11. <laughs> yeah, something like that. Yeah, yeah, that'd be good. Good question. I think last year I did Google Slides because I used, I think I used the school laptop. I will let you know that soon. Is one better than the other for caption? I can do PowerPoint. I can use my own computer. Not a problem. Anything else? Gene had a motion. I don't have a second. All right. All in favor of adjournment at 803. Say aye. 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 Thanks, everybody.